S&P actually revised your outlook on UBS and placed most of the ratings on Credit Suisse entities on Credit Watch to positive implications. So UBS, you have negative, and Credit Suisse, you have positive. Uh, talk us through the rationale for making that decision. Yeah, I mean, and clearly, I mean, our rating from a credit perspective, I mean, Credit Suisse is a weaker entity. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and obviously, acquiring such a major <coughs> company as part of the UBS group um, obviously will re so overall reduce somewhat the, uh, the, the, the credit quality of that group. But I think it's important just to note that actually um, the, the rating for UBS um, as the operating company, which is the important operating part of the business, is unchanged. Um, it's only the, 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 um, the holding company which actually was put on negative outlook at, at right. UBS because mm. um, that's part of the, uh, the integration structure in terms of the capital structure. They're going to integrate the, the, the whole COS and integrate the opcos, and that's, that, that has obviously implications for the ratings as well. When you think about the European financial system, do you view what happened with Credit Suisse as a standalone situation or do you see it as having broader ramifications for the system as a whole? Um, well, I mean, clearly, this is, this is the question of the day. Um, I mean, actually, when we look at our uh, rated entities uh, in the banking sector, I mean, they're very well regulated. They've got great capital, liquidity, all the, all the, all the strengths that we know about. Um, actually, we don't see um, the, the much risk of contagion into the, uh, the regulated, certainly the rated banking sector as a whole. So one thing that really struck me out of the SVB hearings yesterday over in the U.S., that, um, and this came out of it, SVB customers tried to withdraw 81% of total deposits from the bank over two days. And what we heard of, what we read about, was that there were a huge amount of deposit outflows uh, from Credit Suisse in, in the final days and the run-up to that decision. Perhaps not this big, but it does tell you that even if a bank is sitting on a good capital and liquidity situation, the risk of deposit outflows could actually engender a liquidity crisis. How big of a risk is that in your view, especially well, when you look at the structure and the composition of the European banking system, yeah. the way deposits tend to be a little bit stickier? Sure. Well, I mean, that's the point. I mean, obviously, banking is a confidence um, sector. I mean, confidence is critical. Um, but actually, when we look at when we've looked at the, um, at the banks in Europe, um, actually, as you say, we don't see the same dependency on sort of flighty deposits and certainly large corporate deposits and, as, as we've seen in one or two situations in the U.S. Um, so actually, um, why yeah. not? Why not in Europe? Well, well, because well, because we haven't had we don't, for instance, we don't have the tech sector in you know in in quite the same way, having raised huge amounts of capital and actually you know needing to sort of um, park that until they need to use it in their business. Um, and so basically, household deposits, uh, you know, are much stickier. And actually, you know, banks in Europe, you know, rely on that very significantly. Mm. We reckon about 30% of banks, uh, banks, uh, um, um, banks' deposits are from from households. Mm.